Today's lesson uses proportions with a triangle or parallel line. So please be careful. We're still talking about similarity. We're still using a lot of proportions today. The first thing you got to do is understand this theorem 6.4. And I'll make some small modifications. It says if a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the two other sides and it divides the two sides proportionally. So this means when these lines are parallel, you're going to create a proportion. Here's the proportion I'd like you to be able to write down. And I'm going to get it by taking this shape and turning it like this. If I turn the shape like that, what letter should go at the top? R. What letter goes on the bottom right? S. So there's U, there's T, and there's Q. You should be able to get that. All right, so if I take that shape and rotate it like this, this sets up the proportion that is most helpful. So I'm going to pick out a piece from up here. I'm going to pick out RT. RT, and then I'm going to pick out RU from the other side. So I have RT and RU that I've placed over here. Now I could put a number of different things on these bottom parts. I could put... R, Q. If I put R, Q on the bottom left, what should I put on the bottom right? R, S. Here's another one I want you to be able to write down. This is the other way you'll see it today. If I pick out R, T, and R, U once again, but now I pick out T, Q. So I picked R, T over T, Q. What do I put under R, U? R, U matches with U.S. There's a new way we haven't seen. So R.T. will correspond to T.Q. the same way R.U. corresponds to U.S. These are the two separate proportions that you should be able to get from that picture. One more time, I'll emphasize this. I like you to get these parallel pieces going horizontal and the other vertex that's left over at the top. That way we're all consistent with each other. You don't have to do it exactly that way, but this will allow us to be consistent. Down here we take 6, 5, and we take the converse. That means we just change the order. So earlier we had if they're parallel, then they're proportional. Now we have if they're proportional, then we have lines are parallel. So we have QS parallel to TU. So once again, then it's parallel to the third side. So once again, this converse right here comes from changing the order of this one. So you just take these pieces and swap them. I could have had TU and QS. It means the same thing as this. Up next, we have example one. And on example one, it says, look at this diagram and find the length of QU with the given information. So this is the piece we're missing. We'll just call it X. The thing I like about this picture is they have it set up the nice way that helps us. They have those parallel pieces going horizontal, and they have that extra little vertex at the top, just like we talked about earlier. Whenever that goes on, it kind of sets up the proportion for you. So in this picture, we can just think of these four terms having to be filled. So in the picture, what goes in the upper left? Tens in the upper left out of these four terms. So that goes there. What's in the lower left on the picture? X is in the lower left. What's in the upper right on the picture? And what's in the lower right? That's why we like this setup, because it sets up the proportion for you. From there, you can cross multiply. 6 times 10 is 60, and 12 times x is 12x. Divide by 12, and you get x is 5. On example 2, it says we have a spoiler for a remote control car. It has a bunch of given information. Explain why BD is not parallel to AE. Well, that picture is kind of small in my opinion, so I'm going to draw a similar one over here to the side. I'm just going to enlarge it quite a bit. So there's my spoiler. 
We have A, B, C. I'm just copying from the picture over there. We have D and E. And now I'm going to label with the pieces that they gave us in this paragraph. A, B is 31. B, C is 19. C, D is 27. D, E is 23. And it says explain why B, D is not parallel to A, E. So we've got to think back to those theorems. For pieces to be parallel, we had to have sides proportionate. So that's what we need to be checking right now. We need to see if the sides are proportionate. So luckily, this sets up the proportion that we need. Here's the fraction on the left, and here's the fraction on the right. And we have to see if those fractions are proportional. So 27 over 23. I pulled those numbers from the left side, top over bottom. We've got to see, is it equal to 19 over 31? So try that real quick. Can 27 over 23 be simplified? Nope. Can 19 over 31 be simplified? Nope. Those are both primes. Uh, 23 is a prime. We've got a lot of prime numbers that can't simplify. These are not proportional. When sides are not proportional, we don't have parallel lines. So why are those pieces not parallel? Because the sides are not proportional. All right, I'll give you a second. Go ahead and try out these checkpoints one and two. Try them both out. See what you can do. All right, here we go on these checkpoints. It says find the length of KL. This one we have to remember to set up a proportion since we have similar shapes. We're trying to use those parallel lines. The key thing that I tried to get you to understand is to be able to rotate this picture. And if you can rotate it in your mind, then you save time. But if you can't rotate it in your mind, you've got to rotate your paper. So this is how I can rotate my paper real quick. I get those parallel lines going horizontal. And then I have that other vertex at the top, just like we pictured two other times. This is the third time we've seen it like this. I'm trying to find this piece that's unknown. I'm going to have x over 18, just like it's pictured. And I'm going to have 44 over 24, just like it's pictured. From there, I'm going to go through, and I'm going to cross multiply, and I'll end up with x is 33. On the other one. We like to make that also proportional to be parallel. If they're not proportional, then they're not parallel. So once again, I'm going to try to kind of rotate this in my mind this time. I want this vertex to kind of come up to the top and these to kind of come around. So I'm going to have 36 over 80. And I'm going to have 18 over 38. We're going to see if these are proportional. So 36 over 80. I know they're both divisible by 2, so that's 18 over 40. Uh, one more time, that's 9 over 20. So they simplify nicely. This one would be 9 over 19. Are those equal? Well, are those equal? Not equal. These are not proportional. Since they're not proportional, then these are not parallel. You don't have to write all of these. If you can get it from here and then say not proportional, I would be fine with that. Now we're going to discuss a couple more theorems. This one up here has a lot of parallel lines and some transversals. In this one, we still have some lines proportional. The key thing, I like to get those parallel lines going horizontal. Um, that really helps out a lot of times. Uh, but we're going to try to do it without actually rotating it. We're trying to do this visually now. So they started off, and they said UW over WY. When you have UW over UY, what is it proportionate to? So that's UW over WY. What does that correspond to? VX over XZ. Exactly. VX over XZ. So the key thing. If three parallel lines intersect two transversals, then they divide the transversals proportionally. 
And you're going to see that word over and over again in this chapter. The last one. If a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, then it divides the opposite side into segments whose lengths are proportionate. to the lengths of the other two sides. So once again, I like rotating this one since I haven't shown it. Um, I'll go ahead and show you how I would rotate this one. I would grab this shape and I would rotate it right like this. It's going to be slightly different than what they have, um, but I'll show you over here on this picture. CB goes over DB. So these two go together. CB over BD is equal to, now these kind of look the same. These go over each other. So we'll have CA over DA. So let's see, can we transfer that over here? Is it similar? Yeah, it's similar. Let's apply it to this one. They have AD on top. What I want you to see is that this bisector kind of chops it. This is a fraction, and this is a fraction. So AD is on top. AD is going to correspond to this piece, AC. DB is going to correspond to this piece, BC. So once again, a lot of different ways to set up these proportions, but you have to be consistent. That's the key thing. On example three, it says a farmer's land is divided by a newly constructed interstate. The distances are shown in meters. Find the distance CA between the north border and the south border of the farmer's land. And it gives you a hint. It says use theorem 6.6. Six. Well, I want to be able to do as much of this as we can without relying on what's already on this paper. So I'm going to cover up a little bit um, so you're not tempted too much. Let's just try to focus on this picture. We know we're going to have some proportions, and we like having those parallel lines going horizontal, so they're already helping us out. The key thing, we're given a number here, 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 and the question says find the distance C all the way to A. So what do you think we're trying to solve for? What could we put a variable on? So if we put a variable here, and then at the end, put these two pieces together, then we get the total length. So that's what we're going to do right now. You should be able to see your proportion automatically. 2,000 goes over x, and then 2,500 over 3,000 Go ahead and cross multiply. You get x is 2,400. Are we done? Are we done? Okay. Remember, at the end, we don't want just the value of x. We want the whole length. That's what it's asking for in the question. The length of CA adds these two pieces together. So at the end, CA comes from adding 2,400 plus 2,000, and you end up getting that CA is 44 hundred, and the units are in meters. All right, now we're on example four, and this one draws the picture in the orientation that's very helpful. So once again, they have that angle bisector coming straight down through the middle, almost like a vertical line. When they do that, that helps you set up your proportion. So what we need to be able to do is set up a blank fraction equals a blank fraction. That's always our start on a proportion. And from there, we got to go through and see what we know and what we don't know. So typically, we have a fraction made of these two and a fraction made of these two. Right now, I can see that this is 8 over x, and the other is 12 over Ah, okay, so that's a little bit of algebra right there. So if you're unsure about that, you can remember that on line segments, if you know that 1 is x, 
but the total is 14. You take the total minus what you know. For example, if that was 4, you would say 14 minus 4 would give you this piece. Well, same kind of thing goes if, if this is a variable, you can change it. And those would be correct now. So this is 14 minus x. This missing piece right here where I'm putting this dot is 14 minus x. That's an expression that represents the length of gf. From there, we're going to remember that that's a group of terms. And then we're going to cross multiply. We have 12x, which is the easy cross. We write equals 8 parentheses. And we'll go from here. We always remember to distribute when we have a number outside parentheses like this. So we have 8 times 14. Yeah, 112 minus 8x. What term do we move next? Okay, so we've got to move this 8x. It's minusing right now. The opposite would be add 8x. That gives us 20x. And when we divide by 20, we get 5.6. Be careful. Does this answer the question? So look back up here. I'll make the picture clean again. It says find the length of dg. This is the piece we want to know. Do we need to do anything else or are we done? We're done because all we know is that x represents dg. Since we just saw for x, we're done right here. If it said go back and find gf, what would you do? Yeah, to find gf, yeah, I heard it already. You take 14 minus that 5.6. So that's a very good problem. All right, checkpoint 3 aligns with example 3, and checkpoint 4 aligns with example 4. See what you can do. Here we go. Uh, on checkpoint number 3, we've got to be able to set up a proportion. Hopefully you're getting better at these. Sometimes you can just turn your head and see it. Um, once again, I like to get these horizontal, these parallel lines going horizontal, so I'd probably rotate the picture over this way a little bit. So I would have 32 over 24 equals x over 27. Cross multiplying from there, we get x is 36. That's what it should be. This one's kind of similar. This is our x in this case. There's that line that's the bisector. It chops it into those two equal fractions. And here are our fractions right here. So you could either have x on top or 1 on top. It doesn't really matter. I'll do 1 over x equals 1 over square root of 2. And this is logic to me. This is logical. It's not really any math. 1, ha 1 over square root of 2 is the same as 1 over square root of 2. <laughs> Just like if I said... Two-thirds is the same as two over what number? Well, two over three is the same as two over three. That's what I'm getting at. So cross multiplication, x is the square root of two. No decimals. You don't need to be converting those to decimals. That'll only hurt you. That's a good problem. That's it.